Hey, I'm Hunter Allen with Peaks Coaching Group, and we've got the third edition of Training and Racing with the Power Meter out. I'm so proud of this book. Dr. Coggin, Dr. Steve McGregor and I worked really hard on this. This is a great book. There's a ton of new things in here, uh, and one of those things that we're working on has been this new power duration curve right here on page 73, and there's some concepts in here that I'd like to teach you today. So let's jump in, and I'll talk a little bit about these things. First off, we've got our normal X and Y axis here. So on this side, we've got watts here on our y-axis, we've got time on our x-axis, and this is a logarithmic curve, so we have like one second here, two seconds here, five seconds, one minute here, this is probably 20 minutes, and then we have 60 minutes out here, and then this can keep on going out, maybe this is three hours or something like this. But what we first need to do is, we one, we need to understand where is your actual mean maximal power curve. Okay, so what you've actually done, all right? Then we have the power duration curve, and that's really this line of best fit that goes through all these points, finding the best place that it is. And one of the things that we've, we've been learning in, uh, about is this idea of the fact that a lot of people's ability to do work above their FTP is very unique. It's very individualized. So what this power duration curve does is it helps us to find a modeled FTP. So our modeled FTP generally is out here in this area here where there's a bend in the curve, okay? So you'll see this little bend in the curve and it starts to bend towards this way and that can be what we call the modeled FTP. The software, WKO software from Training Peaks helps to show you where this is and this could be your your modeled FTP right across through here, okay? Now, so, <coughs> so here is the MFTP. It's a point of triangulation. It's not exactly your FTP, okay? Don't get hung up, that, oh, this is my FTP. You know, it's, you gotta test, okay? It's a point of triangulation. It could be something different, you know, but it's close, it's a good, it's a good model. All this area under the curve right here, all this area in here, this is the work that you can do above your FTP, okay? This is called your functional reserve capacity, FRC, okay? Your functional reserve capacity. It's the amount of work that you can do above your FTP. That's really all it is, okay? It encompasses your VO2 max, level six, level five, your anaerobic capacity level six, your neuromuscular power level seven, okay? It's a little umbrella over those two things. Now, you can change this, right? You can improve your ability to do work above your FRC by improving your sprint, right? So if we take this and we improve our sprint up here and then we come down, right, that's really gonna change where this power duration curve is gonna come in, okay? So all of a sudden now you have more area in the curve, you can do more work there. Or we can change it out here, we can say, well, gosh, I wanna, uh, I can improve my anaerobic ability, maybe you change it out here and improve it right here. So all of a sudden now this curve shifts this way and you create more area under the curve, giving yourself the ability to do more work above what? your FTP, all right? That's a critical thing that we're looking at. So this is FRC. Think of it as uh, a button that you can push on your handlebar to give you a boost of power for a short period of time, okay? 10 seconds is really what we're looking at when we see the number in the WKO software that says about what, how many kilojoules of work you can do in 10 seconds. So that's the FRC. We're gonna talk more about that soon. There's a whole section on this in the new third edition. Thanks for watching, I'm Hunter Allen, and make it a great day.